How do you add interest and height and beauty to a garden? Especially if it's a cut flower garden where you've got a lot of practical beds. One thing that we've discovered over the years is that anything that adds a little bit of height will instantly make the whole garden look a little more beautiful. While LaRonde and I were talking about our garden structures today, we realized that we both come at it from a slightly different angle. I like to look at my garden and figure out where I want some height because I, I like to create a little bit of a picture with the garden. I like there to be a pleasing line for the eye to follow in, you know, from different angles in mm -hmm. the garden. Mm -hmm. And so I like to figure out what kind of arches, what kind of structures do I want and where do I want them? And then I figure out what I'm going to grow on them. <laughs> and I would come at it from the angle of I figure out where I'm growing my stuff and then I put a, a structure or an arch there. Not always. I actually did want this year to start with a cattle panel arch on the four paths. Mm -hmm. like I have paths <laughs> that divide the garden. That just wasn't how it worked out. So I do have one, but I more just decided I'm growing all my gourds and vines in one quarter. So that's where all my structures are. I wanted to add a little bit of height right away, mm -hmm. make it look a little more beautiful from the start. Eventually the garden will mature and you know I'll have some lilacs, I'll have some snowball bush, I'll have some other height throughout the garden that, that'll make it look a little more interesting too. But I think some arches and some trellises here and there can kind of tide us over till we get there. In our old garden, the head of our garden was just always kind of flat and boring. We had It was some... really about the ugliest part of our garden. Like... Right. We had a few perennials, but they weren't very tall. There wasn't much, didn't feel like much visual interest in the at the head of the garden. And then in, I think it was 2020, we decided just to build a, like a twig arch in the garden and it just made it look like a place you wanted to go into. So the types of structures that we have in our garden this year, um, we both have teepees. Um, Rosita's is made out of saplings, mine is made out of bamboo. Um, we have, both have cattle panel arches and Rosita has just a cute little twig trellis. I have a cucumber trellis of sorts. It's an X shape. Um, is that it? I also have a just a long cattle panel just stretched horizontally that I've tied my tomatoes up to. You really can't hardly see it anymore, but it's there too. While we do like to have garden structures for that visual interest, there is a practical side to it too. We do like to grow our vining plants, whatever mm -hmm. they are, on these trellises. So a few of them that we have growing this year, um, sweet peas, love in a puff, scarlet runner beans, pole beans. I think loranda has got several kinds of beans, lima beans. Mm -hmm. Lima beans and then and a green bean, a Fortex green bean that's a pole bean too. I'm planning to grow some indeterminate tomatoes up my one TP. And uh, we both have pumpkins. I'm not sure if mine will do anything. loranda has got some gourds, I think, mm -hmm. right? Butternut squash, some pumpkins and gourds. Watermelon. Oh, I'm and, also growing watermelon. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And also, you've got cucumbers as well, I think. Yeah. And and sweet potatoes. Almost forgot about the sweet potatoes. Oh yeah. Oh and yeah. And those, all those things that we mentioned, except for maybe the tomatoes, naturally um, climb up a trellis, except for sweet potatoes. And so, the, <laughs> I had a little bit of a. I wasn't sure if I could do it, but I I looked online and I saw somebody had done that. Um, Sweet potatoes do not naturally vine, so I'm having to kind of twist them up on the TP. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I don't want such huge sweet potatoes. We had ginormous ones last year, so I'm hoping that if I maybe discourage the vines a little bit, they'll be a little more reasonable <laughs> sized. <laughs> like we said earlier, you don't have to spend a lot of money for garden structures, and that was part of my criteria this year. I didn't want to spend much for arches and teepees and trellises. So we made, uh, Morgan helped me, and we made a sapling teepee, and it has little horizontal bars too, to kind of help the 
we've got little currant tomatoes that we're going to train up there. We also made a trellis out of saplings and that is just, it's just a vertical trellis. For both of these structures, we pounded some metal tubing in the ground first and then zip tied that to the saplings to, to make them a little sturdier and also so that the bottoms of the saplings won't rot. We also made several arches out of some old cattle panel that we had there on the property. I think it was Morgan, belonged to Morgan's dad and he donated it to the cause, some fantastic rusty um, patinaed <laughs> cattle panel. <laughs> And so we used some tea stakes, you know, four tea stakes, and put the cattle panel between those two and zip tied them to the tea stakes. And they're pretty sturdy. The, the tea stakes aren't going anywhere, so I don't think the cattle panel That's will That's a pretty will sturdy either. structure. Yeah. I've got sweet pea growing now, and then later I will have, and they haven't, they've like gone maybe a foot or two, and they are very unwilling climbers. I don't know if it's too windy or what. I should have probably tied them up, but they're sort of struggling and I have some love in a puff which should do fine and I did poke some pumpkin seeds in the ground so we'll see if those do anything and maybe scarlet runner beans after a bit mm -hmm. so that's kind of the extent of what I've got yeah so I did four cattle panel arches one has the little current tomatoes growing up it and they're about to get to the top um, I'm curious to see what happens <laughs> when they meet in the middle <laughs> then the other arches we've got one with watermelon I, I have interplanted some of them and some of them share a trellis, so I, that's probably a mistake I've made. But I've got watermelon, uh, butternut squash, um, two kinds of pumpkins slash gourds, and then also lima beans and vortex beans on those three arches there. Um, some of them I planted one thing on one side, one on the other, so they have their own side they can grow up. And some I, the, the real mistake I made, I don't like lima beans, <laughs> I'll tell Myron. <laughs> I planted his lima beans, pole limas, um, with the pumpkins. And what happened is the pumpkins quickly overtook and shaded out. Um, so they're coming, like the limas are coming, but there may not be a good showing. Who knows? <laughs> so that's the cattle panel arches. Then I have, you know, like I said, a horizontal cattle panel that has tomatoes zip tied to it. Um, and then we have a teepee with sweet potatoes, a teepee with love and a puff vine. And then my cucumber trellis, which is the X shape, X, can't talk, X shape. Um, and that is just bamboo with Hortanova zip tied to it. And the, the cukes are growing up that way. Is that it? Mm -hmm. So if you're curious what type of materials we used for all of these structures, here's, here's some of what we used. For the sapling structures, I used metal and you could also use a rebar stake. Um, to anchor those and then also the saplings. We just went out to the woods and tried to find the straightest, nicest looking saplings that we could. We've got a woods filled with like hickory and a few other things. And so I tried to find a bunch of little hickory saplings. I figured those would probably be pretty, pretty sturdy. And then just chop the branches off and use the branches also for like cross pieces and things. And to hold all of that together, we just use zip ties. <laughs> Not very aesthetically pleasing, but uh, my hope is that the stuff growing on each of these structures just kind of hides all of that. Uh, we do cut off the ends of the zip ties, so pull them as tight as you can, then cut off the ends. That helps to minimize them a little bit. And you can also wrap them with twine. We've done that before, where you wrapped with twine to kind of cover that black zip tie. For the bamboo structures, obviously you want bamboo canes. Uh, you can get those at you know hardware stores, home garden stores. We got ours down at the bottom of the hill. Somehow there's a, a bamboo stand down there that's going wild. So. This spring we took um, some loppers down there and, and collected a bunch of bamboo. <laughs> you do want to let that, I, I don't know that this stuff is going to root in the garden, but because of the way it's acted, it's just kind of taken over the woods down there. I wanted to make sure that they were dried or mostly dried before I put them in my garden. So I let them <laughs> cure for about four or six weeks. Um, and then to hold those together, Myron actually did, he put one of them together with screws, um, cross pieces of bamboo and screws. Um, but you can also just use zip ties and to actually give place for everything to crawl up. I wrapped them with <clears throat> a, a, a lovely orange baler twine, <laughs> but you can't see it anymore because it's covered up with vines. So.
And then two other things we used was cattle panel that you can get at any farm supply store. Um, we, or you can maybe just dig them out of the woods. <laughs> and tea posts, those are also any farm supply store should have those. And then zip ties to hold those, the cattle panel to the tea right. posts. Right. So lots of zip ties. <laughs> yeah, lots of zip ties. That is all purpose, <laughs> multi purpose tool. I think the fun challenge with garden structures is just to um, limit yourself a little bit and see how resourceful and creative you can get. And if you want inspiration, um, just look on Pinterest, Google garden structures or garden trellises. There's a lot of different ones I want to try. I've got a whole board started. Mm -hmm. So eventually if you come to my garden, you might be confused. Is it a, is it a, a forest? Is it a garden? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It'll be like an upright garden instead of a horizontal one. The really beautiful thing about making garden structures out of just very inexpensive materials is that you can try things out before mm -hmm. you buy something permanent. You know, mm -hmm. I, there are some bigger, more beautiful permanent arches that I eventually like to buy, but I mm -hmm. want to try some, some ideas out first. I have several trellises too that I kind of have had my eye on, but I want to know where they're going to look best in the garden. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to just make something with almost nothing and mm -hmm. try try some of that stuff out first and get a feel for where you want everything before you put some cash down. And I also love these impermanent structures because you can grow a lot more things in a lot smaller space. There's no way in the world I could grow all these pumpkins and watermelon and gourds and things in a small 25 by 25 foot section. The challenge in the future is going to be figuring out how to support those pumpkins as they're growing, but I'll cross that bridge <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> Take little slings for all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Out of what? I don't know. Timber! <laughs> Hey.